Hi, I'm Janine Brown Miller. I just want to bring you a quick webinar on the topic of drug testing in the workplace. The question comes up frequently, should employers even still screen for drugs? What is this all about? Well, the more and more recreational marijuana use is becoming acceptable, this becomes an issue if you're testing for marijuana. Many states are legalizing this as we keep hearing. So why bother testing is the question I often get. What I'm finding with my clients is that they're having a difficult time recruiting because so many drug tests are coming back positive for marijuana. And if you have a zero tolerance, obviously this is very concerning. So as a result, some are actually dropping the testing for marijuana. And many employers are beginning to treat this more like alcohol use and ignoring off-duty recreational use. This is a complex issue. And the issue comes into play when employers are deciding to terminate or hire based on positive marijuana results. So what I recommend to them is to stop and think before they make such actions. Determine what the job is that one will be or is performing, of course. You want to look at the details related to that. And then recognize that if there are performance or behavior problems, there are remedies for these regardless of the reason. So it doesn't take away your ability to remove somebody if you find that their performance is being affected, no matter what it is that is happening with them. Laws are becoming more lenient with recreational use of marijuana, so the risks using this as a reason for adverse employment decisions are becoming more a risk to legal challenges. Employer rights remain. Employers do not have to tolerate behaviors that are undesirable, so reasonable suspicion tests still make sense. Employees cannot come to work impaired. The issue becomes more challenging when tested due to an accident and the employee states they use the drug outside of work. So deciding what to do in that case becomes even harder. The focus needs to be training, just like everything we teach out there, right, in HR? And you have to train your supervisors on what to look for. There are certain behaviors that you want to look for to determine if someone is under the influence while working. When should you consider testing? If there's questionable behaviors, questionable twitching or staggering, strong odors, dilated or watery eyes, blank looks, slurred speech or inability to verbalize coherently, argumentative type person, irritable or drowsy behavior, signs of being non-responsive, and sleeping on the job. Be open and honest with your employee though when you're going to ask them to take a test for reasonable suspicion. Explain to the employee why the test is being ordered and what has been observed. Refer to the substance abuse drug-free workplace policies related, which includes refusal to submit to the test can be grounds for termination. So they have to understand that you do have policies and practices in place and they need to fully understand how you intend on using those. And then keep in mind, however, such behaviors could be grounds for termination without being tied to suspected drug use or impairment on the job. Some calls that come my way, here's one that I get kind of frequently and it's when they have say 15 candidates in this particular case that I'm thinking of. It's a very hard to fill position. The position is essential related to driving. They will drive other people and again they have to drive a company vehicle. Safety is clearly a concern in this particular situation. What do you think they should do? Should they just ignore the drug test and just hire the best candidate? If you really stop and assess this, you have to be very careful because there are federal laws around zero tolerance. So even though state laws are becoming more lenient, there are certain positions that are under the safety um, aspect of law where you have to require a clean drug test. So you have to be sure and look at your essential functions of your job and see if it's tied to that legislation as well. What about the lax supervisor? I do see this quite a bit. Because they have trouble recruiting, they really don't want to catch anybody. They don't want to have to terminate anybody. And they're very lenient with their staff. They often see one of the employees drowsy with slurred speech, but it only comes to the attention of others when co employees complain about it, their coworkers. Should we test them for reasonable suspicion? What about the supervisor? Should anything be addressed here? So first question, yes, it's starting to look like, again, assuming this person hasn't had this problem before, it's something new, 
Um, you definitely have to consider case by case. You might want to consider the reasonable suspicion route to go with drug testing. And then the supervisor needs attention. Whether they get retrained to be reminded of their responsibility, but in any case, they should be very clear on their role related to making sure that their employees are not working while impaired at work. What about ADA? This also comes up as a frequent question. This certainly depends as most things, right? There's never anything really clear cut in HR. Casual drug use is not covered under ADA. Only those who have a drug addiction problem are covered. So keep in mind that persons addicted to drugs but no longer using and have been rehabilitated successfully are then protected by ADA from discrimination on the basis of their past drug addiction. In any case, you want to stick to objective measures of performance expectations rather than letting this type of information skew your opinions. Having said that, an employer may prohibit use of drugs and alcohol in the workplace and require employees not be under the influence while working. So disciplinary action follows for such violations. If you are going to require a drug test, be very clear in the job postings. People need to know the criteria for when they're going for a job. This can also minimize those who are afraid of not testing so you're not having to um, even have them as candidates. And again, this alone can keep some from applying. New York State doesn't have a law specific to drug testing. Private sector employers do not have limits, but be cautious of how you use this policy. Be sure you cannot be deemed as discriminatory as some tests can be positive for those taking medications that are prescribed for certain conditions. This being the case, the candidate could challenge you on eliminating them based on a legally used drug and disability that they have. Be sure to not show any patterns of focusing on protected classes such as race, age, gender, as this could be perceived as discriminatory, so you don't want to certainly target a specific group. If an employer conducts their own tests, requiring employees to disrobe or provide a urine sample in front of others, this could be a violation of privacy, so it's, it is best practices to find a third party to do this for you. And defamation can also be perceived and if, if an employer publicizes a false positive result, as this is viewed as acting in bad faith, knowing the result was incorrect. New York State is seeking to legalize marijuana. We're hearing about that a lot lately. So 2021 is likely going to bring us some significant changes related to cannabis use. He, being our governor, is seeking to legalize responsible use, limiting the sale of cannabis products to adults 21 and over, and establishing strict quality and safety controls. Knowing this on, is on the radar, it would seem that employers may want to start rethinking your drug policy and testing practices to see how you can balance safety in the workplace with reducing the focus on drug testing as a key indicator of a poor performer. Identify the positions in your organization where safety would be a significant concern as a beginning point, because again, there, there may be positions that you have to be sure there's no drug use or there's no uh, positive for any drugs. With everything, please feel free to reach out. These things are ever changing. They're case by case. There's a lot of things we need to consider. So I'm here to help you through anything that you might need related. But again, it's that time now to review all your drug related policies and, and testing requirements and think through how you might want to move forward. Thank you for your attention. Hope to hear from you.